let's take a look at how to construct confidence intervals around a uh, sample proportion, right, where we're trying to estimate a population proportion. And we're going to look at how to do it three ways, uh, with formulas, uh, with a TI-83 type uh, graphing calculator, and with StatCrunch. So let's start with the formulas, because they're actually pretty easy. We have them all right here, everything we need. Um, these are, aren't so much formulas that we're going to use. This is just reminding us of what the confidence interval is, right? The confidence interval is always some measurement plus a minus E. And you want to generalize it that way. Yes, we're talking about proportions, so it's going to be P hat plus a minus E being your margin of error. But in a more general sense, any confidence interval is some measurement from a sample whether it's p hat or x bar because you did the mean or the standard deviation or the variance right any kind of measurement you have and then plus or minus some margin of error and that's going to be your confidence interval uh, in general here is the specific uh, specific equation for calculating your e your margin of error when we're dealing with proportions and we'll have uh, different formulas for means and standard deviations and everything but they're all relatively the same you have some sort of critical value, right? This is the z of alpha over 2, and this just means we're finding a critical value on our normal distribution curve. That's why it's a z, right? And then we're multiplying it by some standard error. And the standard error, you can kind of think of it as it's very similar to a standard deviation. And by doing this, we're just figuring out how wide right, our confidence interval has to be, our margin of error. All right, let's see how we put it into practice. Um, we've got this uh, genetics company that uh, seems to think that they can increase the probability of having a girl if you use this X sort method. And they, um, as of this writing, will say there were 945 babies born to parents using this X sort method, and of those, 879 were girls, which seems pretty high when you think about it. When um, you know just by normal birthing, it should be 50-50. It should be half girls and half boys. All right, so we want to create um, a confidence interval. The first question we have is, what is the best point estimate? Now remember, a point estimate is one value that estimates something in our population. So what's the best point estimate of the population proportion? Well, that's going to be the proportion in our sample, our sample proportion, or our p hat. So all we have to do is calculate p hat. And to calculate p hat, it's very simply, if you remember your um, you know, basic probability, p hat is just good over total, which you can think of as x, your number of successes, over n being your sample size. So in this case, p hat is number of girls, because that's what's considered um, a success, right, because we're looking for the proportion of girls, 879 over n, our sample size, and there were 945 total births. Slap that in your calculator, and you get point nine three zero one, let's say six, I'll go to five decimal places. Or a little bit over, right, just a smidge over 93%, which is pretty high when you think about it, but it could also be due to some weird chance that we just got a sample that was that high. Because remember, the whole idea of this thing is that it's sitting on the normal curve, right, we have some sort of um, sample distribution of all possible samples of births of size 945. And every time we do that, we, um, we calculate the proportion of girls. We have that number down, right? And then we average all of those numbers. And that average should be the true average of the population of, of all births. And we here got our sample to be at 0.93. And that, that could be close to what it should be if you know they're all using the XSORT method, or maybe it's way up here and it's an unusual result. But it's, it's that same kind of idea, and all we're going to do is build a confidence interval around this number. Well, with our normal curve already here, 
it's a good opportunity to then discuss what these z of alpha over 2's mean. Well, they want us to construct a 95% confidence interval. We want to be 95% confident. And so in order to be 95% confident, we want to find what are the z values, right, that contain 95% of the data values in between them. And you can look it up in a table or you can use technology, but you're basically just trying to find out right, how many um, standard deviations right, do we go in each direction to contain 95. And we know that roughly two standard deviations in both directions uh, captures 95% of our data, but we know that's roughly. right. We want to do the precise z. So these uh, z of alpha over 2 things are these z criticals. And the reason why they say it's alpha over 2 is because if we're 95% confident, that means alpha equals 5%. Right? But to find this z, we really need to look up in a table the z that captures 2.5% above it, because there's 2.5% below are 95 percent, right? So if there's 95 percent here, there's 5 percent left over because it's symmetrical. We cut it in half, two and a half here, two and a half there, and that's why it's z of alpha over 2 because we're looking for basically the z of 2.5 percent, right? So this is the z of 2.5 percent. That's what we're looking for. So we can look it up in a table or we can use technology and we can figure out what that z is. If we want to use a table, you have to bring up your z tables and now the idea is you're trying to find the cutoff right we're looking for this z that has two and a half percent above it but according to this picture this tells me that this table is a cumulative table right cumulative area to the left so if i have two and a half percent here i have ninety seven and a half percent there so now i have to look in the body of my table and find ninety seven and a half and there it is right here right point nine seven five and so that is one point nine and we go to the top 1.96. So according to the table, it should be 1.96. So we can write that down, right, according to the table, 1.96. But tables aren't perfect, right? They're inaccurate, they're normally rounded, so we can do a little bit better if we want to use technology. If you have a graphing calculator, like a TI-83 or 84, or any of the, uh, the Inspires, all, all the fancy ones, uh, and even some of the other brands can do this as well. They, uh, they have kind of those tables built in. So you'll notice above VARS is Distrib, your distribution uh, menu. So if you go into your distributions menu, here are all of your different types of distributions. You've got your T distributions, your normal curves, right, your chi-square, and you'll see inverse normal here. So if you choose inverse normal, that's the one that works backwards. That's the, the program that says, you give me um, a, a percentage, right, a probability, and I'll give you the z-score that corresponds to it. And just like our tables, it's cumulative from the left. So to find the z that we're looking for, instead of putting in 2.5%, we have to put 0.97, right, the 97.5%. Hit enter, and there we have it. And you can see that the table just rounded that number up to uh, 1.96. So if we were going to do it to only two decimals, it's pretty much the same. But we can see it's 1.95996 if we want to do that. So 1.95996. That's from the TI. Right? This was from tables. And then the, uh, the last type of technology, if you don't have a graphing calculator, you can use um, you know, uh, online things all over the place. The one that I like to use is uh, StatCrunch. In StatCrunch, all of your uh, tables, all of your probability distributions are called calculators. And so we want the normal calculator, because that's the, the normal curve, the Z curve. Here's your curve, right? The standard normal is what comes up with the mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And then down here, if you give it, let's say, uh, a z score of two, it gives you, again, cumulative area up to the left if you have it this way, and then area to the right if you change the arrow. I'm going to leave it this way because this makes it easier for us to put in 2.5% 
two and a half percent, which is what we're looking for. Hit compute. The picture matches, right? We're looking for the small two and a half percent above, and same thing, right? One point nine five nine nine six four, an extra digit, but you can see that we get that same number all three ways: tables um, and and both types of technology. Technology is just a little more accurate. Okay, so I put in the stat crunch number, which is really the same thing. The calculator had even more digits. I just didn't round as many. All right, so there's really, um, it's not like one is better than the other. Both of these are perfectly fine. The table is fine too. These are just a little bit more accurate. All right, so we now have our z-critical, the first uh, piece of the puzzle for our equation. Now we need to do p-hat, q-hat, and n. Well, p-hat we already have, 0 0.93016. And then what is q-hat? You have to remember that p hat plus q hat always equals 1, right? They're complements of each other. Or more precisely, or, or what would help us more, is that q hat is 1 minus p hat. Makes the algebra easier, so we can actually just do 1 minus 0 0.9016, uh, and we can get that q hat equals 0 0.06. Nine, eight, four, right? Or almost seven percent. It just depends on how much you want to round. My suggestion is you always take uh, two more decimal places than you're going to need at the end. So if you know you're going to need four decimals at the end, you should really take these out to six. Um, you know, if the if the question is only going to require two decimal places, then taking out to four is plenty. Okay, so we've got p hat, we've got q hat. What about n? Well, remember n is just our sample size, 945. So now we have everything. E equals the 1.95996 square root 0 0.93016. Make that a little bigger. Times 0 0.06 nine eight four and then all over nine forty five okay put that in your calculator and you get that e is equal to point zero one six two five and then it goes on 0, 3, 3, 2, 4, but that's enough. 5 should be plenty for whatever we want to do. Or, you know, roughly 1.6, right? 1.6% uh, is our E. That's our margin of error. Okay, so now to um, compute the actual 95% confidence interval, all we have to do is this simple math of p hat minus E and p hat plus E. So we're just doing the um, 93, right, plus or minus this. And so again, you can do it in your calculator if you want, or do it by hand. But you end up getting, very simply, and I'm going to round these off, right? You get 0.914 is less than P, not P hat, less than point. Nine, four, six. I basically just took the the first three, and the the first three, just because it made the math a little easier, a little cleaner. So basically, um, p. Remember, because we're we're um, uh, estimating the true proportion of the population. So that's why this is we're saying p is somewhere between these two numbers, not p hat, because we know what p hat is. P is somewhere between these two numbers. We're ninety five percent confident that it's. Right, that this this um, interval contains p, and that that means that we're 95% confident that p is some number between 91.4% and 94.6%. Okay, and then the last thing, trying to interpret this, what does that mean? Well, based on the results, does the method appear to be effective? Why or why not? Well, if in normal situations you have 50% females, right, in in birth 
these numbers are far above 50%. It doesn't contain 50% anywhere in here. And so because 50% is not in this interval, then we're 95% confident that you're getting something other than 50%, which means it is effective, or at least the data supports the claim that it's effective. Okay, so that's how to do it by hand. Very, very simple. Let's see how to do it with our calculator. Now to do um, any type of statistics in our calculator, we want to go to the stat menu, right? And then calculating, that does um, our summary statistics. Uh, one variable stat statistics is where we get means, medians, modes, things like that. If we go over to tests, this is where we can do z-tests, t-tests, things like that. But as you scroll down, you'll see past the z-tests is a z-interval and further down there are more intervals. There's a T interval, there's a two sample Z, right? Two sample T, and then one proportion Z interval, right? We were dealing with proportions here. We had one sample of proportions, so it's a one proportion Z interval. Choose that one, and then it just asks you some very simple questions. What is your X? Remember, X is your number of successes, so 879. And then what is your N? Well, N was 9. 45. Um, if you were doing it at a different uh, confidence level, you would just change that, but we were doing for 95%. So then you choose calculate, and there you have it. Let me move this over so you can see that it's uh, exactly more or less the same thing we got, just with more decimal places, right? So there's my 0.91, if you round it up, 4, 0.94. Again, if we round it to 6, here's the p hat, that's the same p hat we got. Right, and then here's our n. So it gives you all the information as well as well for p hat and n. Pretty simple on the TI. The last type of technology we could use to do this would be Stat Crunch, equally as simple. Go back to our stat menu, and now we're doing proportion stats. We had one sample. We didn't have raw data. We had a summary. Number of successes. Do you remember what it was? That's your x. And our successes were 879, right there, 879 female births out of 945 total births. Uh, if you're doing hypothesis testing, you would leave this ticked here and then change whatever your hypothesis are, but we're doing a confidence interval. You don't have to worry about this, just leave it on the standard one. And go ahead and compute. Here's your count, here's your total, here's your p hat, right? Here's your standard error. That is not E. E is margin of error. This standard error is actually um, the piece of your equation that is not including the critical value. So if we look here, make it smaller so we can see everything. This piece right here, this square root piece, is your standard error piece. If you were to do that math, Right, this piece hidden under here. If we just did this bit, we would have gotten this number. And then if we took that number and multiplied it by 1.95996, that's what would have given us E. And the reason why they report this instead of the whole thing is it makes the math really easy if you decide you want to do this over again for a different confidence interval. Right? So now all of a sudden you go, let's do a 90% instead of a 95. Well, for 90%, you'd go back over to your tables or whatever, you'd find a new Z. You know, whatever that would be, it'd be like 1.645, if I remember correctly. Then you would take that number and multiply it by this standard error and get your new E relatively quickly and easily. So that's why they'll report that number. And then here's your lower limit and your upper limit, i.e. these two numbers here. You can see are the exact same thing if you round. Okay, so those are the three ways of doing confidence intervals for uh, estimating a population proportion.